Hi, everybody. Joe Chaffee here. Weather in five, five days and five minutes brought to you by Omni True Value Hardware at 1226 North Wellwood Avenue in West Babylon, New York. Mulch, topsoil, sand, salt this winter. And if you need anything to prepare yourself in case there's a tropical storm or hurricane up the East Coast, well, they've got it too. 631-756-1125 for the best prices in town. OmniTrueValue.com is the website. And Tempest by Weatherflow. Get the revolutionary Tempest weather system. Join the fastest growing observing weather network on the planet. Link is pinned to the top of the chat. Uh, link is pinned to the uh, descriptor on this video, I should say. And uh, the referral link with the coupon code, I want a weather station. If you make any purchase off the Tempest weather uh, website, you get... 10% off. All right, we've got two things to talk about tonight. First off, let's talk about the severe weather that is going on. We have a severe thunderstorm watch through this evening that covers eastern and central Pennsylvania, most of the western counties in New Jersey, a few counties in southeastern New York, Orange County, north and west through the Catskills, Maryland, southward into northeastern Virginia. And the radars are certainly reflecting a lot of activity here as we have lots of showers and thunderstorms as of 6 p.m. Eastern time. We have a fair number of severe thunderstorm warnings that are up as well. So look for this to continue through this evening. Uh, not everybody's going to get it. You can see there's bare spots around. Uh, but the main concentration in the watch area certainly is seeing a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity for the next couple of hours. And then we'll start to see this wind down uh, after that. Uh, might even be a stray shower or thunderstorm left over during the overnight period. We also have showers and storms down the southern Appalachians into northern Georgia and northeastern Alabama. And also in eastern North and South Carolina. And as we take a look at the radar uh, to the west, some showers and a few storms moving into the western lakes. And we've got some activity going on in the southwest. As far as rainfall is concerned, rainfall amounts, there is the possibility of flash flooding with these thunderstorms because this is the third day that we've had severe thunderstorm watches up for pretty much the same spots. So uh, additional rainfalls of an inch and a half to as much as three inches for the next week. And bear in mind that in these thunderstorms, uh, you could certainly get localized flash flooding with rainfall amounts being double what is being indicated. Also, heavy rains for the southwest and into the southern plains and even into the southern areas of what we, we would consider the central plains of an inch and a half to as much as three inches there. So uh, we will see this all wind down. We'll probably have another risk for showers and thunderstorms tomorrow, Sunday. And wouldn't surprise me if we wind up seeing a severe weather. Let's take a look at what the Storm Prediction Center is telling us. And again, we have this slight risk uh, this evening in the area where we have the severe thunderstorm watch and also various areas of slight risk up in the plains uh, and into the northern Rockies. Also a small area in southeast Texas and a small area in eastern Nevada and western Utah. Now for tomorrow, no change in the forecast here. They do uh, have general thunderstorms, but for now the Storm Prediction Center is not indicating any risk. It wouldn't surprise me if we wind up seeing a marginal risk or even a small area of slight risk show up. Uh, in the forecast uh, tomorrow morning, and a marginal risk from North Texas, Southeastern Arcan uh, uh, Colorado, Southwestern Kansas, and Northeastern New Mexico. Now let's switch gears and take a look at Hurricane Lee, which uh, we had a Category 5 hurricane Friday morning. Uh, we had a Category 2 hurricane practically uh, by uh, Friday evening because of Southwest shear. And while there is still some shear going on, with southwesterly winds, you can see, if you look close enough on the loop, you can see some clouds moving southwest and northeast. But it seems to me that it's less than yesterday and that the hurricane is looking a bit more organized as we go into this evening. And I suspect that we'll probably start to see this strengthen a bit as we move into Sunday and on into Monday. A hurricane Lee, the latest forecast from the Hurricane Center, as of 5 p.m. Eastern time, and the position is at 20.7 north, 59.1 west, uh, which is well to the northeast of the Leeward Islands. You'll notice that the forecast track is west-northwest into Wednesday, and then a curve more north-northwest between Wednesday and Thursday. There's still some spread in the guidance 
there is still some uncertainty going forward. Now, these are the hurricane tracking models uh, from late this afternoon. Most have it recurving between 65 and 70 degrees west uh, as we move into the middle part of next week and then running north northeast from there this map is not wide enough to show uh, the u.s or or, or atlantic canada uh, we do have a couple of outliers though that uh, bring it up close to 70 degrees west and i'll come back to that in a moment and in the meantime uh, the intensity models have it as a cat three and many of the models do have this going back as a cat four uh, probably sometime uh, later Sunday night or Monday. Uh, we'll see how it does today. The southwest shear needs to disappear. So uh, I want to take a look at the upper air pattern here going forward because there are, there are two issues. Obviously, the upper air steering is going to drive Lee, and this is the GFS today. Uh, we have Lee on the lower right a deep trough moving into the western lakes on tuesday that strengthens and if the gfs has its way uh, extends southward picks lee up passes it to the west of bermuda but well east of the north carolina coast and then drags it north northeastward uh, toward nova scotia and uh, perhaps even down east maine i want you to also notice that there is a second trough that drops behind this and gets rather intense for next weekend and i bring this up because uh today's run of the european was very interesting to say the least and here's its idea with lee it is much slower with bringing Lee northward so that this first trough on Wednesday and Thursday, which both models have, bypasses Lee and lets the second sharp, sharp trough that develops next weekend, which both models have, uh, and moves it up north northwestward uh, and actually brings it ashore, uh, brings it right over Block Island, Rhode Island, and then into uh, Rhode Island and southeastern Massachusetts. Now, uh, this, uh, I want to make it very clear that to, this is one run of one model uh, that is showing this at the moment. And is it impossible? No, it's not impossible. Is it the most likely solution? I probably would say no. Uh, the, the big difference is that the European is sl slowing down Lee much more than any of the models are and that's going to be key to this if if the models are both correct in a major trough in the eastern part of the united states next weekend then it's going to be a matter of where is lee positioned does it miss that first trough which is the differences between the europe the gfs and the canadian versus what the european does and here's what it looks like at the surface and you, you see it moves northward and then moves northwestward, responding to that deep trough. But this is next Sunday, uh, that and and it brings in it brings it in into New England Sunday evening, and then it moves northward. So if you believe the European, uh, it's got to be two days later than what the other models are showing. And uh, going into that for this week, let's just roll through the forecast. And we've got the new GFS that is coming out now. Uh, but, of course, we've got these showers and thunderstorms with the stall front in the east this evening. We are, we're going to see them again tomorrow. Again, uh, we could see some severe weather risk. Might get a little bit of a break on Monday. I still have to put them in the forecast on Monday, but they might be more scattered in nature. Stronger cold front arrives on Tuesday with more showers and thunderstorms. And then you see uh, the push of that front offshore, uh, which suggests that Lee is now moving northward there, west of Bermuda, and this next high is building in. So it says to me that at least the late afternoon of the run of the GFS, which is only out five days, is probably going to do the same thing that it's been doing, which is to recurve it northeastward and then maybe bring it up to Nova Scotia and down East Maine. So I don't think the GFS is going to all of a sudden decide to agree with what the European has. So the bottom line is you know, we're, we're just a week. We're still a week away from this. And. If we start to see Lee slow down considerably, where it finds itself in a position that it misses that trough in the middle part of the latter part of next week, then we may have to consider whether the Europeans got a European solution is a um, is more probable.
I got it's I'm having trouble saying words here because that, that run today actually threw me quite a curveball. So in the meantime, more of the same. We'll be on tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. on the Joe and Joe Weather Show. We're going to have a special guest, meteorologist Bill Goodman from the National Weather Service office in Upton, New York. That's on Long Island and covers the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, tri-state area. That's their responsibility. That's tomorrow night at 7.35 p.m. So mark it down, and we hope to see you then.